5% contained. Tonight we have live team coverage on day four of the firefight. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Beth Barnesworth. And I'm CJ Ward. We begin with more encouraging news. The CHP just moments ago told us the 101 could open soon, but did not say exactly when. Also, the railroad is back open and other agencies are working on their recovery plans. News Channel reporter John Palmentary is live in the fire zone. And John, you were shown a close up look at the multi-million dollar facility there that was hit hard by flames. Yes, and we're at the Tehigwis landfill outside near Highway 101. We haven't seen any of those cars go by just yet, but we've heard the train, so we know things are progressing along. And there certainly is a lot to do. There's a lot of calculating of the losses and to inspect all the areas, doing the assessments, not just for the firefighters who are still on the front line trying to put a circle around this fire, but also county officials and private parties who are calculating their damages. One of the hardest hit areas is the Tehigwas landfill, and we saw those today where the new $130 million materials recovery facility was in the eye of the fire during day one of the assault on Monday. The main building held up, but an attached unit swallowed up the flames and the damage was significant to all the pieces that connected. Crews were using a concrete saw to open up a wall as a way to bring out the burning chips that were inside. The building is completely intact. Uh, and the uh, fire was in the wood chip area. We are currently still assessing the damage, um, but we don't have a timetable yet on when the building will go back online or, or what it will take to get it back online. Other areas with damage included Refugio Road, where evidence of the destructive fire still smolder in many areas. It's unclear exactly how many structures are lost or if they were occupied or just used for storage. That's still being assessed. Some vehicles nearby, including jet skis, were overrun by flames. Throughout the day, the sound of the choppers overhead making water drops could be heard in the canyons. The fires climbed high up in the rugged hills, which will make it a slow progress to get to all the hot spots going forward. Clearly, there's a lot of work to do and in some of the hardest hit areas like the various ranches, and there's numerous ranches on Refugio Road. The Circle Bar B, one of them that's very well known, held together pretty well. The main building is there and the cabins are there. We didn't see any obvious losses there. Up the road, so many other ranches up there. Mailboxes were knocked down, burnt and melted and a lot of evidence of a very hot and fast moving fire up there. Again, all of that still needs to be assessed. And one more look behind me, that's Highway 101 and the Pacific Ocean. So you can see where I'm at. And so far, we have not seen that big stream of cars with the freeway reopening soon, but we know it's going to happen in just the next few minutes. Reporting live along the Gaviota coastline, I'm News Channel reporter John Palmentary. All right, great update. Thank you so much, John. You just touched on it. Another big boost today from air support in the Alisal firefight. And the San Inez Airport is the designated heli base for water dropping helicopters. Water tankers are parked on the tarmac, ready to fill up the choppers as they make the trip to and from the fire lines. The water and retardant drops resumed today. Now, those helicopters and air tankers are critical, especially now that, as John said, most.